Hello and welcome to this uh, uh, another showcase uh, tutorial. And today we are going to install, or in this video, particular video, we are going to install a GeoNode uh, in Windows. So there are two things that I highly recommend before uh, uh, doing the steps for this video. And uh, one of them is I would highly recommend that you install the Windows sub, uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, which is a, a requirement. Uh, and there's a video that I did uh, for the same. So I'll put the link in the description below on how to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. However, you can access, you can also read the Microsoft documentation on how to uh, install the Windows subsystem for Linux. So that is one. The second item after installing the Windows subsystem for Linux, you may require to install uh, Ubuntu. Uh, since in this case, we're using Ubuntu. Uh, so you can find it in the Windows store or alternatively, you can also install it using the, the PowerShell or the command prompt uh, using some commands that uh, already, I already also did a video on that. And uh, you're going to, uh, I'm going to share the display. A link. So let's start with uh, opening our terminal, uh, the Windows terminal. So this is how it looks like. Uh, by default, it, it opens uh, using the PowerShell. So for those of you who do not uh, know or do not have never used the Windows terminal, you can also get it in the Windows Store. So I prefer using it. Uh, you can as well stick to the command prompt window. So this is a Windows terminal from Microsoft. So after you have installed your Ubuntu successfully, uh, then you you'll see it in this list. Uh, it appears on this. If you want to open a new tab, for example, you can instead of just clicking on the plus because the plus will open will still open the PowerShell. Since it's the default option, you will uh, drop click, click the drop down and open Ubuntu. Uh, click Ubuntu rather, and it opens the Ubuntu uh, uh, interface or the terminal. So this is uh, Ubuntu. Maybe you as could be having a host name, uh, maybe user at uh, PC uh, here. So the only thing that I have is this dollar sign. It indicates that I'm in the terminal for Ubuntu. So uh, let's check a few things. Uh, remember the prerequisites for GeoNode. Uh, we still did this. We still did this in uh, previous videos, and uh, you can check the number, the processor, the cores that you need to use within the NPROC. And in this case, it shows that I have eight uh, core processors. Uh, you can also check the info uh, pre memory. Uh, pre yeah. So this one shows the free memory. So in this case, I have uh, how many are these? 16 million. So this is about 16 uh, GB uh, total. And the free is 15.9 uh, or something or thereabout. Yeah, so I think um, these uh, specifications are good for GeoNode. So I'll just clear the screen. The first step now, I will do an update. And also I do an upgrade. Then it will prompt me for my password. Yeah, so I'll do this. I'll remove this. Uh, it has already. It's already up to date. Yeah. So now we'll uh, also refer to the GNO documentation. And the first step I will do. I'll quickly go to the GeoNode core, uh, but note that we are not entirely using this documentation for GeoNode core. We are using the GeoNode basic installation because I know you'll agree with me that it's better to use Docker or the steps are shorter when using Docker rather than using the core uh, de deployment or the advanced deployment method. So I'm going to update. And I'm done with this. I just wanted to fetch this repository for Ubuntu GIS. So I'll just close it. 
Now we'll proceed with the GeoNode basic installation. So this is a reference that I'm making. And one thing that you need to note is that we are using Windows. The host operating system is Windows. However, we are using uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, and uh, we shall see. Uh, it is because, you know, deploying in Windows, you know, has been a challenge. But I think we, just like many other software, so with um, the emergence of the WSL, it has been quite easier to deploy applications and install some applications, generally included in uh, Windows. So uh, this command uh, is for package installation, and we will install all these. So I've just adjusted it a little bit. I've removed uh, these uh, repetitions and uh, added it in this. So I'll just uh, install it. So it will install all the packages, just like we did in the previous video. Yeah, so <coughs> it is. Uh, it has already installed our uh, packages. Yeah, it is uh, almost completing. So it has completed uh, installing the packages. So the next step will be setting up Docker. So remember that we are setting up Docker inside the Ubuntu and not in uh, Windows. So uh, it's telling me that uh, this universe distribution is already there. So we'll just do a quick update and then we'll proceed with the next uh, command. So this command installs the kit a db helper and uh, these dev script uh, packages. So if you're interested, you can check what some of these packages do. So it is updating the, man the manual database and uh, just copy this second uh, the other command and this one installs uh, these libraries the CURL, GNU PG agent for keys or GNU keys. So uh, we'll we have added the Docker key, Ubuntu. And then we're going to paste this, which will add the repository. Then after that, we are going to update. Then we're going to install uh, Docker. And then we are going to remove any unnecessary or unused, already used packages. Once again, it is updating the manual database. And uh, now we can remove any unused packages and then we'll add our current user to Docker. So this user mode adds my current user to the group, the G stands for the group and Docker. And this is the, the current user. So I'll, it's a, you're required to re-log in as your current user so that it picks up permissions for using Docker. So you can, uh, alternatively, you can also install it on CentOS. I'm not sure if CentOS is in the Windows Store, but I think it should be. Uh, seems not. Yeah, so you can just confirm if it is in the WSL, then you can also install it in the CentOS. So we will skip this part because it is for CentOS. We are using Ubuntu, including this one, this step. We have already done it in Ubuntu. So we'll create an instance of the GeoNode project like we did in the previous video. 
and uh, it should uh, take some few, maybe some few seconds. Yeah, so it has completed uh, cloning into our PC. So we we'll move to the next step where we'll uh, activate the virtual environment wrapper that we installed. Then you're going to create a virtual environment called MyGeonode using the mk virtual env command. And this is an alternative. So ours has worked. So if you have used these two commands, there's no need to do this because it will be a repetition. Uh, so yeah, so this second part is an alternative to this first part. So we, we are already in the uh, virtual uh, environment called my Geonode. So we just install uh, Django. So you can uh, you can name your virtual if you understand the process. You can rename your uh, virtual machine to whatever. Uh, but you need to change some configurations here in the, uh, the environment configurations here for in the for Geonode. Yeah, so we will skip this part, which is for CentOS, and we will proceed with uh, creating the project. So we have created a project called my Geonode. So if you check on the directory, you will notice that you have it's not very clear. But, uh, you have two folders. You have the Geonode project, and then we have my Geonode. So this is the instance that we have created based on the Geonode template, Geonode project template. And it states that if the previous command does not work, then you can use this. So we, are not, we don't need to use this in this case because the first command has worked. So we will navigate into the Geonode, uh, my Geonode folder. And then we will run the Docker shell script. So before we run it, let me just uh, output its comp, comp uh, we have to put the contents. So it basically has three, around three or four commands. So we have build, docker build. Uh, so it will build the containers and this may take a lot of, quite some time. So you may go and have some coffee or, you know, just give it a be patient for it to build. And then uh, we'll run the docker compose, which will stop all the containers uh, that are running, if, if any. And then it will uh, run the containers. The third command, docker compose app, will run the containers in a detached mode. Uh, detached mode means that they can they're running in the background. Yeah, you don't you you know you don't have to do anything. You just they just proceed on uh, running in the background. And then you have the docker prune a. So this one uh, removes all the I think the dangling uh, images. And dangling networks or networks that are not being used and uh, volumes and containers. But for more detail, I would recommend you to go and uh, read the Docker documentation to understand all this. So that's what happens when you execute this shell script. So we are going to uh, run this shell script. Yeah, and it's complaining. Error, could not connect to the Docker daemon at local host so it's asking is it running let's see if it's indeed if it's, if it's running so then we are seeing these uh warning these will remove all containers so this is the final command that i was talking about the docker prunes prune uh, system prune so it removes uh, all stopped containers it removes networks that are not being used images uh, that without at least one container associated with them and also the so I'll just click yes. And uh, there's one trick about the Docker service. You remember we were using sudo system control uh, docker start. Oh, sorry. Uh, it should be start docker. Yeah, so this is a problem with the with you and using WSL. Uh, you may get this. So there's a workaround. Either you create your own system configuration file, which is complicated, 
uh, in this, you know, for, for newbies, uh, or you use what you call the, there's another uh, service, there are two service files. So let me show you the one that we are going to use. So we have etc in each.d folder. So if we check inside this folder, you'll realize that you have all these things here. And among them, we have Docker. So this is where Docker is installed. And this is something that with WSL, you may find that your services, you may need to, to be starting them using this. I think it, it is the alternative and it is the way that it has been used. So to cut the whole story short, we are going to do this sudo etc need.d uh, docker, then we start, we add the start command. And it is saying starting docker and it, it has actually started it very fast. So let's confirm that this docker is running using the similar similar command, but checking the status. So it just tells us docker is running, okay? So now we can be able to execute the, to start our containers because the docker system was not running, but now uh, it is running. So let's build our images. So this process is going to take quite some time. So I'll, you, should just, you should just be patient and allow it to build as it's pulling all these layers for, for those components for Geonode. So you give it some time and then I will, we will resume at a time where we have already pulled or already built all our containers, hopefully without any, without errors. Yeah, so after several coffees or after a couple of uh, hours, if not minutes, then the build is complete. So it all depends on the uh, several factors. So the building could take some time. Uh, like in my case, it took about uh, 30 minutes. Maybe in somebody else will take some other uh, couple of minutes. So uh, this is the log. And if we look at the log, uh, on this highlighted area, you'll notice that it is uh, it has created uh, various containers. So we have my Geonode, uh, we have a database for my Geonode, Nginx. We have another one for Jenkins, uh, RabbitMQ, for the queuing services. Uh, we have GeoServer configuration, and then we have GeoServer, the actual GeoServer container for Geonode. And then we have the Django application and the salary. For Geonode. So these are the, the ones that have been created. And uh, right now what we can do, we can uh, check uh, if the containers, uh, the containers that are available using Docker uh, space PS. So like we did in the previous video. So these are the containers that are actually running. And uh, let me just clear the screen. And as the documentation states, you can check the logs. So for example, if you want to check the logs for Geonode, just run and uh, this indicates uh, if it shows us the processes. So, for example, in our browser, we'll just navigate to localhost. As you can see, it is running. So, uh, as you can see, it is saying that it, ha it has already executed or set up the UWSGI service and the settings which are up and running. So, let's try and uh, sign in using the default admin username and admin as password yeah and uh, we are successfully signed in as uh, it's shown in the browser so now uh, the what happens is that if you want to let's first exit the logs so if you want to run your geonode while on windows uh, you'll need to start these uh, uh, you need to start uh, or the Ubuntu needs to be running. So as long as it is running, uh, then, and of course, Docker inside, uh, it should be running. Uh, then you can be able to to uh, work with Geonode anytime, maybe when we start your computer. So yeah, so that is, uh, this summarizes the installation of uh, Geonode in Ubuntu. Uh, if you find this content uh, to be of essence or, or it is helpful to you, uh, kindly uh, like. Uh, you can also share the videos with others uh, who have similar challenges, maybe installing Geonode in Windows. And uh, finally, you can subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon 
uh, so that whenever I release any new content, you can uh, you'll be able to get a notification. Yeah, so we will be looking at how to customize this GeoNode user interface uh, and maybe other uh, other things like interacting with the user interface and the rest.